welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to test free drive cloning applications. These allow us to make an exact duplicate of a hard drive or SSD on another drive. Drive cloning software is therefore commonly used when you want to upgrade your computer's system drive because it means you don't have to reinstall your operating system and applications. Rather, you just need to connect the new drive, run the cloning software to copy the old drive to the new drive, and then take out the old drive and replace it with the new one. The specific programs I'm going to demonstrate are Samsung Data Migration, Disk Genius, and Clonezilla Live. And I'll also say something about the Linux DD command. Other free cloning applications include Ether's Partition Master Free Edition, Minitool Partition Wizard Free, and IOMI Partition Assistant Standard. But whilst all of these are nice pieces of software, in my tests I've discovered that none of them allow a whole drive to be cloned in the free version. I've also not included Macrium Reflect Free, as whilst this is excellent free drive cloning software, it's sadly no longer available from Macrium and reaches end of life in January 2024. Just before we test the software, it's worth noting that to clone a system drive, we need a means of connecting the new drive for duplication. On a laptop, it may be hooked up using a USB to SATA adapter or CADI, or a USB to M.2 enclosure. Alternatively, on a desktop PC, a new SATA drive may be connected directly to the motherboard, whilst a new M.2 drive may be plugged into a free motherboard slot, or else an M.2 USB enclosure or PCIe adapter card. More information is provided in my videos, M.2 SSD adapters and enclosures, and old PC update number two, SSD boot drive. First, let's start with Samsung data migration, currently in version four. This can be downloaded from Samsung's consumer storage support pages, and I'll provide links to everything in the video description. Samsung Data Migration is Windows only, and only works if you're cloning to a Samsung SSD. However, as Samsung is the largest SSD manufacturer, and lots of people use their drives, I thought we should start with this very reliable and very easy to use free cloning application. The download link is here, as you can see, and it just takes you to a straightforward file. You don't have to register anything like that. I've already downloaded and installed, so we'll get rid of that right now. And once you install the software, you end up with an icon on the desktop like this. So we just run this up, and Windows may check if you want to do it. Yes, we do. And here's the interface, very straightforward, and you'll see straight away it's selected the drive it's going to clone. Here are system drive. It'll always be the system drive. That's the only option we have. This happens to be a 500 gigabyte Samsung drive, but it can be any hard drive or SSD. And we can see what's on the drive down here. This particular drive has got a C drive on which Windows and some software is installed. This is a test system, so it's not a great deal installed. And I've also got set up here another partition, another volume called D, which holds video files. And all we have to do here now is to go to select target drive like that. I've got a Samsung QVO one terabyte drive connected via USB adapter, so I'll select that like this. And as you can see, it's automatically added our C drive to the clone drive. And then we can choose if we want to add other volumes. So for example, if we want to add the D volume up here, we can go up to that, click it, it'll appear down there. If we don't want to, we can get rid of it, but I'll add it in like that. And as you might be able to see in the very small text in this interface, we can select up to three volumes to include in the clone. If you want to have more volumes than that, you'll have to use another cloning application. If you want to, you can change how the space is allocated between volumes. You just go down to the bottom here, go down across this little blue line and drag it like that. And as you can see, space has been reallocated in proportion. So our C drive up here was 357 gigabytes on this half terabyte drive. It's now going to be 839 on the new drive. And of course, a lot of the time when you're doing an upgrade, what you're doing is going from a smaller to a larger drive, but you don't have to. Providing what is stored on the volumes up here will fit onto the space down here, you can do a clone. Anyway, this is basically it in terms of a Samsung interface. All we now have to do is to click on Start. 
and it comes up with this message, which tells us that it'll shut down the machine 20 seconds after performing the clone, and it checks we really want to continue, which we do, so we'll click on OK. And uh, things now start off, progress will be shown at the bottom of the screen, and we'll now use the magic of filmmaking to speed on through. And there we are, it's finished. The machine will now shut down. There we go. And all we have to do after the shutdown is to replace our original drive with a new cloned drive, and we will have successfully migrated to a new SSD. Right, shall we move on to Disk Genius, a program with free drive cloning functionality, which you can use with any manufacturer's hard drives and SSDs. And as you can see, there's a free download button here. We'll just uh, click on that, and in a second, it'll hopefully generate a file for us to download. There it is. As you saw, we didn't have to register. We didn't have to provide an email address, anything like that. And as in the last part of the video, I've already downloaded and installed this piece of software, so we'll cancel this and close down our browser and run up this genius, which is sitting there on our desktop. Yes, Windows, we want to do it. And uh, here it is come up like that. And uh, oh look, they're going to have to get rid of their Twitter name and bird like everyone else in the world. Isn't it daft they've renamed Twitter? Anyway, back to Disk Genius. And uh, as you can see, what we've got here in the interface is more complex than what we saw in the Samsung software in the last part of the video. Not least, we've got more information on our system drive, our Samsung SSD up there, where we can see at the top of the screen the different partitions on the drive. And we can see here the uh, C partition where Windows is. We can see the D partition where I store video files. But we can also see two hidden partitions. At the start of the drive, we can see what's called the Windows System Reserved partition. This contains things like the boot manager, boot configuration files, things like that. Very important. That must be cloned if we're cloning a system drive. And at the other end, we've got a Windows recovery partition. And if you want, you can delete your Windows recovery partition, but it's a good idea to leave it there in case, well, in case you ever want to recover Windows. Anyway, if we want to clone this drive, we can go to Tools here, and there is a Clone Disk option, but to clone a system drive, you should use the option called System Migration. So we'll click on that like that, and it asks us to select a target disk. And I've returned our Samsung QVO SSD we're going to clone to to factory state using a command in Windows called Dispart. And if you want to know how to return a drive to factory state using Dispart, you can watch my Dispart video. Anyway, let's select the drive here like that and uh, OK. And as you can see, it's set things up, but it hasn't set things up to clone every partition to the new drive. It's missed out the extra data partition I happen to have created. And this is what the system migration does. It only selects the partitions for cloning that it actually needs to make Windows work. The C drive here and the Windows System Reserve partition and the Windows Recovery partition. But if, like me, you have got a drive with extra partitions on it, you can include them. You just go to Manage Partitions like that. Add Partition. We'll click the D drive like that and OK and uh, OK again. And there it is. It's been put across. And as previously in the Samsung software, our new drive is bigger than the old drive. It doesn't have to be, but here it is. And we can therefore reallocate space to make our C drive bigger on the new drive. Same with our D drive. Very nice software to use this. And there we are. Everything is now ready for the clone. So we can click on Start like that. It checks we want to do this because if we get this wrong, obviously it's very serious and I'm sure we do want to do it OK. And then it asks us exactly how we want to do the clone. And the default is hot migration, which is a clever method for cloning a system drive even when Windows is running. So we'll click on hot migration like that, and the process will begin, and we'll use the magic of filmmaking to speed on through. And there we are, the clone is complete. And I think we'll just test it out, so we'll uh, close things down here, and we'll close down Windows. And what I'm going to do is to connect the QVO drive we've just cloned to to a SATA port on the computer's motherboard, remove the uh, NVMe system drive currently there, and see if things will boot up. And here we are booting up again. Hopefully we'll boot back into Windows with the uh, QVO drive we've cloned to now as our, our system drive. It looks like, yes, it's working. Always good to be going into Windows, isn't it? Well. 
generally it isn't. But anyway, here we are back in Windows and it lets us to click on this PC. And yes, we can see we've, uh, well, we've obviously booted anyway, but we can see we've got more space available. Let's just go to uh, settings and uh, go to the device manager and prove it to you. And if we look at uh, disk drives, there we are, look, we're running from the Samsung Qvo SSD to which we've cloned our system using Disk Genius. Greetings, here I am back again, and we're now going to look at Clonezilla Live, which is a combination of a cloning application called Clonezilla and a cut down Linux distro. And it runs from a bootable USB drive. So you can use Clonezilla Live to clone a drive regardless of your computer's operating system. To use Clonezilla Live, we need to download either a zip or ISO file. So let's go across to the download page over here. And I'm going to select here an ISO file like that and download. And it takes us across to SourceForge, as you can see. Do be careful on SourceForge not to click on things like, uh, let's get rid of that a second, click on things like the advert with download links. I'm going to make sure you just wait for the SourceForge file itself. There's the file. I've actually downloaded it already into a cloning software, so I won't do it again. So we can now get rid of this like that. And we now need to write the ISO file to a bootable USB drive using an imaging program. And here we're going to use Belena Etcher. There it is. We'll select the file like uh, that. There we are. And I've already plugged in a USB drive. It's 32 gigabytes in size. It only needs to be 500 megabytes. But uh, this is the one I happen to have lying around. Anyway, we'll now click on Flash. There we go. As usual, Windows checks what we want to do. And we'll now speed on through. There we are. And with the imaging complete, we can now close down Belena Etcher and its exciting little messages, and also close down Windows so we can boot from a USB drive. And here to do this, I'm going to press F12 on boot to get to my system's boot menu, where I can select the uh, USB drive like that, although the configuration for booting from USB may be different on your system. Anyway, here we are in Clones of the Live, where we'll select the first option like that. There we are, where I'll select to use English language because it's the only one I know, and then keep the default keyboard layout. That will be fine. And then we'll start Clonezilla as you would expect. Next, we'll go down to device device because we want to work with two hardware devices. We want to clone one drive to another. So we'll select that. There we go. It's now finding our drives, which is nice of it. And on this screen, we'll select beginner mode. Why make things more difficult than they have to be? Here we'll then select disk to local disk like that. And on this screen, we now need to select our source drive, which is the first drive here, our 500 gigabyte SanDisk system drive. Next, guess what? We need to select our target drive, which is going to be our long suffering Qvo one terabyte drive. We'll select that like that. And it is worth noting that Clonezilla can only clone to a drive of the same or larger size than the source drive. Next, we'll select Skip Checking Repairing Source File System. I'm happy there's no problems to be found. And then on this screen, I'm going to select the second option, Create Partition Table Proportionately. So the partitions to be cloned to a new drive will make use of all available space. So we won't end up with the same size partitions as the old drive on the new drive and lots of unallocated space. Next, we want to choose what happens when the process has completed. I'm going to press here to uh, enter command line prompt, largely because it'll help me with the recording of this section of the video. But you may well want to choose to uh, shut down, although I'll stick with the, the second option, enter command line prompt. And there we are, we can now press enter to continue. And it gives us a warning, this will overwrite all the data on our long suffering one terabyte Samsung Qvo drive. We know it will, we'll go yes and uh, enter. And guess what will happen? It'll warn us again. We're still certain we want to do it. It'll go yes and enter again. And there we are, the magic is now commencing. And as previously, we'll speed on through, although I would note here, it's so much more exciting to watch the cloning process take place on a command line.
And there we are, it's finished. We'll press enter to continue because it's asked us to like that. And I'm now going to close down the computer and switch over the drives to see if this has been a success. And here we are booting up again. It looks like we're going into Windows. We've got a little circly thing going on there, which is a, always a good sign. Yes, we are welcome back into Windows. Clonezilla has done its stuff. And we'll just check everything's been cloned in proportion. We'll open up this PC. Yes, our partitions are now larger than they were on our old system drive. Our Clonezilla clone has clearly worked. So, just before we finish, for Linux users, I thought I should mention the Linux DD command. This stands for Data Duplicator and can be used to clone a whole drive, as we can see if I open up the terminal here in Linux Mint. As Linux treats everything as a file, the syntax specifies the input file, here drive SDA, and then the output file, here drive SDB, and then options can be included such as status equals progress if we want to monitor the clone. And if we press enter, there we go, a drive clone is now in progress. If all this seems fantastic, it should be noted that Linux DD is not smart, and unlike the other programs in this video, will copy both used and empty space. It also won't resize partitions to fit a new, larger drive, so if upgrading a system drive, other drive tools will have to be used. DD should also not be used to copy mounted drives, and hence, in summary, it's not really a Linux alternative to a program like Clonezilla if you want to clone drives rather than individual partitions. Drive cloning software, free or otherwise, is very useful if we want to update or back up the system drive in a computer. Here, for example, in this little box, I have a clone of the system drive of my video editing PC, which I reclone every few months. And this means if the system drive in the computer has a problem, I can simply take it out, replace it with a clone, and very quickly be back up and running which is very important for a computer that I use to earn my living. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.